What's better, a soft shell silicon mask that molds to your face or a hard shell plastic mask that doesn't quite mold to your face but gives you pretty good coverage? Well, personally, I like something a little bit different. More on that at the end of the video. I'm affiliated with some of the companies mentioned in this video and I will earn a commission if you buy through my links or discount codes. Products were provided to me free of charge and all opinions are my own. This is not medical advice. Now, when I refer to a soft shell mask, I mean something like this, the Project E Lumilux mask here. It's, it's actually flat, but very flexible. Silicon, it's got some cutouts for your nose, mouth, straps to them, and they simply wrap around your face like so. Good examples here are the higher dose mask, the Omnilux mask or the Nano Leaf mask. Now the hard shell masks are hard. They're made of plastic instead of silicon. Now it's a rigid design and they usually have a lot more LEDs and these LEDs sit off your face, not directly on your face like the soft shell masks. Examples here are the Amara mask or the TheraFace mask or something like the really high-end Joe's misting mask. Now, the big question is, which one works better? And well, really it depends on the mask itself. The LEDs, the coverage, the wavelengths, the power output. I put together a, a buyer's guide, a red light therapy mask buyer's guide. I'll put a link to that down below. Uh, sign up and that will go through the key things you need to look for when buying a mask. Because you could have a really good hard shell mask and you could have a really good soft shell mask. Or you could have a really terrible hard shell mask and a super terrible soft shell mask. Ferrero FAQ202, anyone? But fortunately, most masks are pretty good. So now it comes down to which type of mask is best for you. Because my best mask may be different to your best mask. It depends on what you want from a mask. So before I go into the pros and cons of each, let me just explain it this way. Think of a mask as simply an applicator of light. At the end of the day, we're trying to get light in a particular wavelength, a particular color at the right density on the skin. It doesn't really matter if it comes from a hard shell mask, a soft shell mask, a torch, a panel, a wrap, a big pod. They're all doing the same thing, delivering light to the skin. Okay, so knowing this, let's look at the pros of a hard shell mask. Now, one of the biggest benefits of a hard shell mask is that the LEDs are off the face. Now, it's kind of funny because this is also a downside, so more on this soon. But the benefit here is the LEDs are further away from the face, so the light is spread. The light disperses better, hopefully. You get a nice, even blend of light on the face. You're not getting concentrated hot spots where the LEDs are. Compare this to a soft shell mask where the LEDs are right in contact with the skin, so you're getting some light here and here and here, and you get a concentrated polka dot effect. That's not a problem with off the face hard shell masks. The light spread on the face is really good. Manufacturers are typically able to get more LEDs in there. It's just the way the masks are built. So not only do you get a nicer blend of light, you're getting more LEDs emitting more light. Another benefit of the hard shell mask is that typically a more premium product. It's a solid build. It often has nicer features. TheraBody, for instance, have a vibration feature. The Joe's hard shell mask has a misting feature and you often get higher power output or even a bit of battery. Sometimes you can get really nice controllers as well. It's all bundled into, again, a more premium polished feature rich package. Another good thing with the hard shell mask is it's often easier to talk because you don't have anything directly on your lips. As you can see with this mask, it doesn't necessarily mean what you're saying is nice and crystal clear because it is going to be muffled and there's typically no mouth opening. Another benefit, usually you can see quite well with these masks. The TheraFace mask, for instance, has a nice clear eye cutout so you can be on your phone, watching a movie, reading a book, doing the dishes. So all this sounds good, right? Well, there are a lot of downsides with the hard shell masks. First up, the hard shell, all of these features, bigger battery, they come at a cost. And yes, that's a financial cost. The hard shell masks are typically a lot more expensive than soft shell masks, but it also comes at a cost of weight and bulkiness. You see, if you want something that you can be doing your housework with, even though you might have nice clear vision, these hard shell masks are typically heavy. For instance, when I reviewed the TheraBody mask, by the way, I've reviewed like 30 odd masks, so check them all out if you're interested in that. My wife tried it and she found that, yeah, it was quite nice to wear, but it was very heavy and very bulky. And she was like, I don't really wear this if I was lying down. She could feel the weight pulling her head forward and she didn't like it. So factor that into the equation when buying a mask. 
Another downside is the fixed design. One may find it sits nicely on their face, another may find that the contact around the top of the eyebrows is just too much. You can't do anything about it. Speaking of the eyes, typically these hard shell mask designs use support mechanisms around the eye, which means you don't really get very good light coverage around the eyes. Now, personally, this is an area of concern for me. I want light coverage under the eyes by the crow's feet, because this is where I have fine lines and wrinkles and aging signs. So sure, you might get really nice blend of light in your forehead, your cheeks, your nose, but then around the eyes here, a lot of it's literally blocked because of how these masks are designed. Just look at the mirror mask here. It's the eye inserts that come into contact with the face, and you can see the thick rubber is gonna block any light from hitting all around these areas. Another downside with these masks is the weight, the size, and the rigidity. If you plan on traveling with these masks or throwing it in your bag and taking it away for the weekend or even moving around the house, you know, upstairs, downstairs, bedroom to the living room, you may find you're less prone to doing it because unlike a soft shell silicon mask where you can literally fold it up, you can't do that with these masks. So if you travel a lot and you want something to throw in your suitcase and know it's not going to get damaged, or maybe you have a home with little kids and you know they're just going to be playing with all of these things, maybe stay away from the hard shell masks. A few other downsides with the hard shell masks, they can be a little bit claustrophobic. If you're someone who's worn a full face helmet and just freak out, you're not going to like these hard shell masks because they do cover in your whole face and they are quite heavy and bulky. Also, you have a potential downside where light scatters or bounces off the skin. It's not a big issue because a company should boost the power output in these hard shell masks to account for this, but still something to think about. And then finally, you don't have as many options. So the price is typically higher and you mainly have three or four options in the market compared to 20 or 30 or 40 options when it comes to soft shell masks. Okay, so now let's look at the pros of a soft shell mask. Firstly, you have excellent fit. They literally mold and wrap around the face. Now, it's not perfect. Again, if you've watched my reviews, some of them are horrible. Uh, check out my review of the Inya mask. Super cheap. Put it all on and I could feel a ton of pressure on the bridge of my nose, so much so that it gave me a headache. Or if it's not cut the right way or you've got a unique feature on your face like a larger nose or a high nose bridge or wider eyes or something you may find that it just doesn't work still though because there are so many mask options out there it's not hard to shop around again check my reviews or just buy something that's got a good return period another good thing is talking and vision can be pretty good so for instance i can put this on i can keep talking and it should be relatively clear Saying that, some masks do come into contact with your lips, so it may feel a bit funny. They're super lightweight, very lightweight, and super durable. I showed you how you can roll them up, throw them in a suitcase, the kids can literally jump on these, they're not going to break. Also, because it's directly on your face, the light is going to penetrate well, you don't have issues with light scattering. And because of this, we typically have shorter treatment times compared to, say, a harder shell mask, though it does depend on the LED power output. Hey, if you are shopping for a mask, I've got a really cool shopping tool. I'll put it down below. You can compare all the panels that I've tested, see all my notes, see pricing, power output, wavelength. And if you're confused or overwhelmed because there's a lot of data there, click the little chat box in the corner. It pops up a little AI shopping tool. I've trained it myself. It is very, very cool. Have a play with it. Okay, so what are the downsides to the soft shell masks? Well, firstly, you don't get that nice spread of light that you do from an off the face hard shell mask. Some of these masks only have 60 LEDs, which may sound like a lot, but when you see 60 points on your face, there's a lot of gaps in between, meaning those areas on your face don't get much or if any light exposure. Of course, you can remedy this by finding a mask that's got a lot of LEDs, which do exist. Another downside with the direct on face mask is they can build up a bit of moisture, humidity, and you can feel a little bit uncomfortable. I tried tests for this in my reviews, but still it's one of these things you just have to try and experience for yourself. These masks aren't good if you react to silicon, though this is very, very rare. And another big problem with these masks is a lot of them have really bad coverage dead spots. Not necessarily in between the LEDs, but for whatever reason, the manufacturer hasn't put LEDs in certain areas, maybe around the eyes, or they've got big openings around the eyes, or you don't get any LED, or you only get maybe one LED on the top of your nose. So knowing all of this, what's best and what do I like? 
well, I personally like the soft shell masks, but I like what I'm calling the 3D soft shell masks or a semi soft shell mask. I have one here. This is the Roho mask. It's silicon, it's flexible, but as you can see, it's not flat. It's kind of molded already. And this actually gives an even better fit to the face and in turn, even better light coverage. It's still nice and lightweight and comes with all the benefits of the soft shell mask. Now, some examples here are, of course, the Roho mask, our current body do a really nice semi molded mask. There's a few options out there. So knowing all of this, what should you do? Well, choose a hard shell mask if you want maximum LED count and a nice even spread of light, but you're not too worried about light coverage around the eyes. Also, if you're happy paying a premium and you're not planning on traveling and you expect to use the mask, maybe lying down and choose a soft shell mask if you're more price conscious. You want durability, you want portability, you want lightweight travel options and maybe you want something that's got a particular wavelength because again there are a lot more options with soft shell masks just make sure to pay attention to how it fits around your eyes and nose as this is often a pain point the ventilation you get whether it's mouth enclosed or open and also of course the led count the wavelengths in there the power output and things like warranty and returns